I'm PJ from TreelineUSA.com. I've worked for Treeline for over 20 years now and I've had an awesome opportunity to work with woodcarvers from all around the world and I love it. It is so fun to work with people and help them learn a new hobby that, of something they thought they once couldn't do and now they're successful at it. And it's so rewarding to get into a hobby like this and make some of your first projects and feel good about it. It's so fun. But over the years too, we've noticed uh, several different common mistakes that people make as they get into carving. And so today we want to put together a video of the 10 most common mistakes that we see new wood carvers make. So let's get started. The number one most common mistake wood carvers make is they don't strop their tools often enough. Stropping is very simple to do and just with a piece of leather, some polishing compound in your blade, but it's a process of fine tuning that edge and putting that mirror finish on it. With sharpening, it's, it's better to maintain a tool than it is to totally regrind it. And stropping is a way to maintain that edge. And so we typically recommend stropping your tool about every 20 to 30 minutes and make about 10 to 15 passes on each side of the blade. If you do that, your tool will stay way more sharp and it won't feel like you're fighting the wood as you're pushing it through. Okay, the second most common mistake we see also has to do with stropping, but is people have a tendency to roll the bevel. And by that I mean most blades are designed with a pretty flat bevel on this as it's coming up. And so usually when you strop, you want to strop with your finger down on the blade and pushing it down and going away from the sharp edge and keeping it flat. What people have a tendency to do is at the end of their stroke, they have a tendency to roll the bevel just slightly. And as you roll that, you take your nice flat edge and you're rounding it to a point and now it makes it thick going into the material. So as you strop, put your finger down on it, go straight across and straight lift straight up and prevent from rolling that bevel. Okay, the third common mistake we want to talk about is using too hard of woods. Sometimes when people first get started into carving, they go to the hardware store, or they find like a 2x4 lying around, and they try to carve on that, and it's miserable. Even with a sharp tool, working with hard woods like that is still no fun. So the most common woods that we use are, are basswood and butternut, and, uh, and there's maybe some others out there like aspen, but basswood is by far the favorite hand carving wood. And you'll find real quick that as you carve with soft woods, the knife just sails right through it. But when you try to carve harder woods, like this is a piece of of walnut here. It works, but you're fighting it. Here's a piece of, of maple. And again, you're just fighting the material the entire time. You're having to sharpen more often as well. And so when you go to learn how to hand carve, preferably you'll use basswood and you'll enjoy carving a whole lot more. Number four, don't buy cheap tools. So often we see people buy cheap knockoff tools and they just don't hold an edge. We've seen some blades that are almost as soft as aluminum and you try to sharpen it and you carve with it, you make a stroke or two and it's already dull again. So don't buy cheap tools. The only thing good about buying cheap tools though is you get a lot of sharpening practice. So maybe that might be a good thing to do. Buy a set of cheap tools, learn how to sharpen, but when you buy good tools, the, your investment will last a lifetime. Number five, lack of safety equipment. A glove and a thumb guard will help protect your hands more than you'll ever realize. A lot of times people will start carving and think they'll just carve for a minute or two and feel like they don't need their glove and thumb guard and soon will find out that they'll accidentally slip and cut their hand and that quickly ends their carving session. A glove and a thumb guard is a very inexpensive investment and certainly cheaper than a copay, but it'll help you stay a lot safer as you carve. Okay, number six, don't try too complicated projects too soon. Sometimes people will see these incredible carvings and at shows or online and want to try carving those and as some of their first projects and they soon find out that it's just over their head right now. Start simple. There's a lot of very basic whittling type projects out there that you could get into to kind of build those skills that'll help you tackle more complicated projects down the road. So keep it simple and work up to these more complicated projects. Okay, number seven, not getting enough repetition. Oftentimes people will finish a project and bounce to something totally different. And if you'll take that first project and do that multiple times, you'll gain a lot of skills and a lot of confidence in doing that thing that'll help you with more complicated projects down the road. So to repeat, do it again, get better at it. We've got a local carving uh, friend and, and instructor here, Guy Nelson, that carves these bulletizers. They're incredible. But you look at the back of this and it says number 7,150. So not that you have to carve 7,000 of the same thing, but the, but the principle here is to repeat things and get confident and, and get that repetition that you need to get better at it. And as you do that, you'll see your skills increase significantly. 
Number eight, trying to learn everything on your own. So often people will say, well, I'm self-taught and I've learned this stuff on my own and that's great, but there's so much good information out there and there's so many people that are willing to teach you that will really help accelerate that learning curve. So take a class, buy a book, there's good ones out there, learn from YouTube videos, learn from anybody that's willing to teach you, but learn from their experiences, learn from their mistakes, and you'll see that your skill level will grow tremendously in a hurry. Number nine, not learning how to work with the wood grain. Wood grain makes all the difference when you're carving, especially as you get into some of the details. So to kind of demonstrate this, I, I drew the direction of the grain on this piece of basswood. You notice as we go across right here, that as we go down, the wood grain gets longer and longer as we go down. And so the general rule is we say always carve downhill. So if I were to carve this direction right here, it, the, the wood supports itself as I'm going down, but as I come uphill, it has a tendency to want to tear off because it's not supported by anything as we get, as the wood grain gets shorter. So notice this as I carve with it, and I carve downhill, the wood comes off so easily, but if I carve uphill, it wants to break, break off right through here instead. And my knife sinks down into it, and now it's really hard to get it out. So if you ever find that you're struggling getting it to cut clean, just simply take your, your the project and carve the other or carve the other direction so that the wood grain gets longer as you go down as you go downhill. And now we're to number 10. Number 10 most common mistake we see is being impatient. So many people get frustrated when their project doesn't turn out perfectly, or they mess up, or they, they, they feel like it just didn't turn out quite like they wanted it to. It's just a piece of wood. It's okay to start over. It's okay to, to try it again. And you know what? Paint hides a lot of mistakes. So be patient with this. Try it again. Follow these other techniques of keeping your tools sharp, um, trying the project over and over again, but be patient. Don't give up too quickly and realize that it's a journey and enjoy that journey. We hope this video has been helpful demonstrating for you 10 common mistakes that wood carvers make. We would love to hear some of your comments. If you've seen other carvers make mistakes or you yourself have made mistakes over the years as you've been learning to carve, please comment in the comment section below. We'd love to hear that. Uh, we at TreelineUSA.com carry a wide variety of different tools and materials to help you get started into wood carving. It is a ton of fun. Visit us at our website and if you like this video and like to see others, please click subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.